Good evening. As you know, the Kingston City School District has received $21 million in federal funding to be used over the next four years. Both funding streams have guidance and restrictions on how this money is to be used. The following presentation is the Kingston City School District's plan to use these funds not only to bridge the gaps created by the COVID-19 pandemic, but also to improve student achievement, student social, emotional, and physical well-being, address equity, and, and make other meaningful systemic changes to our school district. The plan was created using stakeholder input, district data, and best practices and research-based approaches in all areas. This plan also represents the Kingston City School District's commitment to our students and our community to make change. We must commit to these changes. If Kingston City School District looks the same in four years, we will have not done our job and we will have missed the greatest opportunity given to public education in our lifetime. I will also add that this plan is not written in stone. There will be extensive review, outreach, and evaluation as we go through this process to identify areas that need to be changed or altered. This is an iterative process and will be ongoing. I thank everyone who's participating tonight and after the presentation, we'll be doing my best to answer questions. Go to the next slide. This plan has guiding principles that we established, which were focused on students, commit to a multi-year approach, targeting our investment to increase services for students who need it most, and transparency. We established these commitments using community input from our district leadership teams, representatives from the Boys and Girls Club, the Ulster Immigrant Defense Network, Center of Crea for Creative Education, Citizens Action, the Kingston Emergency Food Collaborative, the Ulster Department of Youth, the YMCA, the Kingston Teachers Federation, our building principals, our bilingual family workers, our homeless coordinators, Ulster BOCES, our town halls for the community, and our thought exchange program, which had over 800 participants. We found through these, through this, uh, these efforts, um, several common themes. I won't read them all to you, but they, they, these themes were used as the, the backbone and establishing all of our commitments to our community in this plan. Our commitments, addressing learning loss and improving academic outcomes, providing students social emotional support and physical well-being, addressing the unique needs of our English language learners, students with disabilities and our economically disadvantaged students, diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, technology, facilities, and evaluation and community input. Our commitment for around addressing learning loss starts with our summer program, which will be a three-year commitment. These programs are at every level, will offer both academic and social emotional benefits. We also have free breakfast and lunch will be served to all our students daily, transportation is provided, and we will do shuttles to aftercare for students who are in those. Beyond the summer program, we're also expanding our after school programming to all buildings. We're extending our credit recovery in the middle schools and the high school. Enhancing our transition program for our kindergarten, grade five and grade nine. Reducing, keeping our reduced class sizes K through three and keeping our elementary average class size below 20 students. We look also to improve academic outcomes. Three lofty goals. By June of 2024, all students will be reading at grade level by grade three. Also by June of 2024, all students will be performing at grade level in math by grade three. And by June of 2024, the Kingston High School graduation rate will be 100%. And that will be inclusive of our career development, occupational studies, commencement credential students, our, our the test assessing secondary completion students, and the skills and achievement commencement credential students. By June of 2024, students will be reading at grade level by, uh, at grade level by grade three. Our, our 
efforts in that area are around adopting new new curriculum, our, our, um, our data and in input from our teachers indicate the need for a phonics instruction for our K through one students, and this coupled with a fully implemented Pioneer Valley reading curriculum, which is a guiding reading approach with proper teacher professional support, complete materials, and along with increased reading teachers to assist in the response to intervention process K through eight, and the use of our writer's workshop program will assist us in keeping this commitment. By June of 2024, all students will be performing at grade level in math by grade three. We're gonna continue the use of our Engage New York curriculum with fidelity and adding additional math response to intervention supports with new research-based interventions such as Numbers World, a research-based teacher-led program that helps struggling learners by intensely focusing on important skills and standards. We also, in all of these areas, will be looking to build our capacity creating professional development opportunities for our faculty staff and using our faculty and staff as the turnkey trainers in many of these situations. We will also be expanding our Montessori training for all teachers and administrators in George Washington Elementary School. By June of 2024, 100% of Kingston High School students will graduate on time. Our focus will be on our cohort model, watching each grade and their progress towards graduation. We're going to increase our guidance support, including a guidance counselor for English language learners. We're going to expand our credit recovery opportunities and expand them to satellite options with some of our community-based partners. We're increasing our academic intervention services faculty and increasing those opportunities for our students as well. Expanding our night school program, including an English language learners night school. And we are exploring later start time for Kingston High, for Kingston High School. Research is showing improved student achievement at secondary level through later start times. We want to investigate this possibility for our high school students. Our commitment around social, emotional, and physical well being. All students will have access to quality mental health services and social emotional supports. By June of 2024, Kingston City School District will have a fully established restorative practices program K through 12. By June of 2024, all schools will have updated new play spaces and playgrounds. By June of 2022, Kingston, all Kingston City School District will, students will have access to meals that include fresh fruit, vegetables, and locally sourced foods. And by June of 2022, Kingston City School District will offer free swimming lessons to all Kingston City School District's students and their families. The additions in the health Health, health services and social emotional supports include on-site mental health clinics hosted by Aster in eight of our 10 buildings and the opportunity for shuttle service for people to get from the other two. Dedicated social workers at each school. Additional bilingual social workers. We want to add three of them and have them serve us district-wide. Expanding our trauma-informed training to a district-wide approach. Adding the Sanford Harmony social emotional learning curriculum at all elementary schools. And the Sanford and Harmony is a research-based social emotional curriculum that can be integrated into all classrooms. Registered behavioral technicians at all schools, hiring a board certified behavioral analyst or behavior specialist, and hiring an attendance and engaging social worker for our elementary schools. By June of 2024, Kingston City School District will have a fully established restorative practices program K through 12. Establishing a restorative practice task force to organize and implement training and restructure our discipline practices. That task force will be made up of parents, teachers, students, administrators, board members, and community partners. At the middle level, we'll continue our partnership and expand our partnership with the International Institute for Restorative Practice. practice. We're going to build our capacity with our faculty and staff and turnkey training with that group. And at the high school, we have a newly started family of Woodstock partnership where we will have an embedded restorative practice facilitator in our building. By June of 2024, all schools will have updated new play spaces and playgrounds. We will direct our architects to review and audit all play areas and outside play equipment, basketball hoops, playing fields, playing surfaces, etc. We will also focus on having ADA specialized equipment for students with disabilities at all of our playgrounds and all of our play areas. We want to form school based committees to make recommendations to the district for play areas and we will engage play area contractors, our architects, engineers and the Department of Buildings grounds as to where they will go and how we will put, how we will erect these facilities. 
by June of 2022, all Kingston City School District students will have access to meals that include fresh fruit and vegetables and locally sourced food. The district will allocate funding to support farm to school partnerships and school gardens. We will also create a food education program and will be developed and implemented, some of, some of which will be implemented using community partners, such as Land to Learn. Expansion of community eligibility program, which is the free lunch breakfast and lunch for all students will be studied and recommend recommendations to the board will be presented by June of 2022. Our commitments around addressing the unique needs of English language learners, students with disabilities and economically disadvantaged students. We will be adopting the fast for word curriculum. The fast for word curriculum is a research based program that assists English language learners and students with dyslexia in reading. We will be adding additional bilingual family worker. As mentioned earlier, bilingual social family or social workers, an English language learner outreach program, which will bring people from our district out into the community, into the homes of our English language learners. A siphon and newcomer program at Kingston High School and the middle schools. A dedicated guidance counselor for English language learners at Kingston High School. We're going to start parent academies at every building. Early speech intervention services expanded our related service push-in model at the elementary schools and the related service push-in model is an integrated approach to meeting students needs early on through in-class services such as speech social emotional learning and reading all students in the class will benefit from these supports with higher needs students receiving more intense focus this is an early intervention and most students in these classes enter the next grade without the need for these services services in the future we also have a, a new Devereaux partnership, and the Devereaux program is a tra training and support program for students with behavioral needs. This will enable the Kingston City School District to bring some students back into our schools from out of district placements that are often a long bus ride away. We will also continue and expand our differentiated instruction professional development, K-12. Our commitments around diversity, equity, inclusion, and access. By December of 2021, the Kingston City School District will develop and implement a plan for our faculty and staff to proportionately reflect the diversity of our student body by June of 2024. By June of 2022, the Kingston City School District will conduct a thorough curriculum review and adopt culturally relevant curricula and provide teacher support in the implementation of this curricula. And by September of 2021, the Kingston City School District will establish, establish a Department of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. The Department of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion will include a Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and an Administrator for Recruitment, Retention, and Networking for Educators of Color. There will be, there will be a budget and clerical support, and they will coordinate partnerships with many of our current partners. Our commitments for technology. By September of 2022, all students will have a Chromebook and staff will be trained and supported in the use of the instructional technology. We will phase in the one-to-one -one program and our teachers will have professional development support through additional instructional coaches, instructional technology coaches, and additional IT support. Our commitment around facilities. By September of 2021, the Kingston City School District will have a facilities plan in place to address all HVAC issues. This plan will also investigate, including the installation of air conditioning in all of our schools. Our architects and engineers have been directed to present the Board of Education with a comprehensive presentation and analysis of district HVAC and the estimates of cost for installation of air condition August of 2021. Commitment to evaluation, community input, and communication. The Kingston City School District Administration will provide regular updates to the Board of Education and our community on the progress towards these goals. The Kingston City School District will conduct an annual climate and cultural survey for parents, staff, and students. And the Kingston City School District will enhance the communications department and the community coordinator position will be filled. We will also work with BOCES and hire a graphic designer, a web design, and a videographer. As part of the community input, we want to, we've established a calendar starting in September of 2021 and ending in June of 2022, um, kicking off 
really on Saturday, the 18th of September with a welcome back event and a community input session at Deet Stadium. And then every couple of months, we'll have another one, another community input session, as well as board presentations. Lastly, remote learning for the fall of 2021. Kingston City School District is committed to provide remote learning as directed by the New York State Education Department. This remote learning plan will have dedicated remote teachers at all grade levels, dedicated counselors and social workers to remote learners, and food service options will be made available to remote learners. There's also a BOCES remote program, and the Kingston State School District will make that BOCES remote program learning uh, remote learning program available to any student who is interested in that option. Well, I know that was a lot to digest in a very short period of time. That plan will be posted on our website tomorrow, and we will uh, again have more sessions such as this uh, moving forward throughout the summer, so we can get more in put and have more conversation, um, but we wanted to have this out there today, uh, knowing that the, the 30th is our deadline. So we will take questions and I see I already have two. What is SIFE program at Middleland High School? SIFE is a program for students with interrupted formal education. So students who come to us may be from another country where they haven't been in school um, for a number of years, uh, where we can bring them in, give them intense um, uh, um, instruction and get them up to speed to where they need to be. So SIFE stands for Students of, of with Interrupted Formal Education. That's two of them. Uh, the general plan sounds good, but please talk specifically about dollar uh, the dollar percentages devoted to each type of expenditure in the plan. We're developing, so we, we have to develop the economic economic piece of this plan for the state education department and hand that in as far as a um, what's called an FS 10. So we're in the middle of developing that per dot, you know, the dollar per dollar or dollar per program um, in each of those areas. I noticed the call for teachers for summer school teachers. How do you plan to recruit new teachers for this endeavor and other expansions of teachers staff both this year and years to come. How do you plan to retain these teachers? Um, well, we've been able to uh, get teachers. I mean, we start always with our internal postings for teachers and hope that we have Kingston City School District teachers in our classrooms, but then we can post outside for outside teachers. We've been able to um, have enough teachers to fill our summer schools for this year, but I think also, um, as many of you know, um, there is a lot of fatigue after the last 15 months, and I think some people uh, were looking to not necessarily teach summer school who traditionally have for us in the past. But we will, um, I think next year we get a little earlier start, um, and after what we hope to be a normal school year, we'll, we will have, um, you know, our Kingston City School District teachers more interested in teaching summer school. You are adding three district-wide bilingual family workers. How many currently for the district? We can't have one per school. The need is there. Um, we, we actually we have one social worker per school, and actually we have multiple social workers at the middle schools and high schools. Uh, the three the three bilingual family work or by not bilingual, bilingual social workers will work district wide, so there will be multiple social workers. And actually, part of our you know our preference for any social workers we're hiring, and and really uh, any of our staff that we're hiring is that they would be bilingual. So uh, as you see, we have several additional social workers, but we wanted to guarantee that we. We have three bilingual. Hopefully they all will be and we can utilize them you know, in each build. Please talk more about what the district's restorative practices will ideally look like in 2024. Well, ideally we will have um, every one of our faculty and staff trained in restorative practices and ideally our current discipline practices will be will be substituted with uh, or replaced I should say, with restorative practices for just about every um, any any infraction of our code of conduct, and we will have certain teams in each school who are highly trained in um, in restorative circles and and restorative um, restorative mediation. Uh, we already have a really great team at the middle school who's been very well trained, but we need to expand that district. 
district-wide. At the elementary level, we're really looking more around community circles than necessarily restorative circles, but it's all in that same vein of, of restorative practices and community building. Will all teachers and staff be required to sign on to using restorative practices? Well, the restorative practices will be the will be the policy of the district. So yes, we will be um, we will be working to make sure that everyone understands, is trained, and you know, is working within that within that framework as established by the district as our practice and policy and established by the Board of Education. What are parent academies? Um, our vision around parent academies is to have evenings for parents where they can come in and have different uh, at different times, have different whether it's teachers or administrators working with them, uh, getting their input actually on what the what the content would be. I think is our first thing. You know, is it is it help around technology? Is it help around um, what can they do to to assist with their student homework? Or is it just help around knowing under, knowing and understanding the best way to communicate with school, our best way to school to communicate with them? So I think it could be a wide open. Uh, I think early early in the school year, we reach out to parents to find out what do they want to know, and then we can provide that. Again, it's just another opportunity for parents to come into our buildings, meet with our faculty, staff, and administrators, and, and get comfortable with what we're doing. Okay, that's the same question. <laughs> What kind of behavior problems does the Devereaux partnership address? The Devereaux partnership really addresses the very severe behavioral problems that currently um, we have students that are bussed out of district to, to manage those um, behaviors. So this program would be able to take in any of those students who went into um, go out of district and any that would in the future be placed in those type of programs. One of the downsides is it's very difficult to um, find these programs and these students are um, bust an hour away in some cases uh, to programs that will accept them. We want to create that program here um, so and, and use these behavioral um, supports and trainings through Devereaux uh, to better serve our students. How much will be budgeted to the new DEI uh, Diversity, Equity, and Education uh, and Inclusion Program. Yeah, I, you know, there's, there we're basically looking at, you know, two full-time administrators, a full-time clerical person, and then we're going to have to develop a curriculum budget for them as well. Um, one of our first goals there is to get the right people, and getting the right people and seeing that, and having them have an opportunity to um, really work to create that department and help us in creating that department, um, establishing a budget. What are the, what are their goals? What are the what are the realities around what they think they can accomplish? So we don't have a you know a budget as per se just yet. We do have a budget for personnel, obviously, um, and our budget for our clerical assistance, but they will have a budget around curriculum development, around partnerships, around you know uh, travel if it's about recruiting teachers and you know out of state and those kind of things. So we will have a you know a, a pretty um, substantial budget for them to do the job that they need to do. The SEL program is, is called the Sanford Harmony SEL program at the elementary level. And as I said, it's a research based social emotional curriculum and it can be integrated right into the classroom by the classroom teacher. I apologize how uh, he said how much funding you received at the beginning. Didn't hear it. Can you give the amount? Yes, it's, it's just about twenty one million dollars. What will be the criteria for a student to remain remote? Um, you know, that kind of remains to be seen at this point. We're still waiting for guidance from the state education department um, on what the remote um, program will be required to look like and what that, you know, what our what our guidance is around that. Um, so right now we don't have criteria. The Board of Regents is meeting in July next month uh, very soon, and they plan to make a decision on that and they'll let us know where we are. What is the one-to-one -one tech program? One-to-one -one tech program will be one computer for student. One-to-one -one means one, one piece of IT you know, uh, hardware for each student in the district. Um, but that is more that we need to do more than just give students a piece of hardware. We need to make sure that if we're giving students pieces of hardware, there's a pedagogical approach behind that, that we have teachers who are trained in instruction, use the use of instructional technology, and 
that we are that it's not just a toy that it's a tool um, so that that our one-to-one -one program will be um, developed over the next year as we acquire the the um, the devices as well as you know provide the teacher training and get the people on board that we need to and I think instructional technology coaches are a very important part of that we have two in the district now we want to expand that to two more so how many students did not have adequate technology this year well what we can say is we gave out over 4,000 Chromebooks this year we have 6,500 students we gave out more than 4,000 Chromebooks um, by September of this year we had no waiting list on students who were who wanted Chromebooks we also gave out more than 150 uh, mobile hotspots to students who were having problems uh, with connectivity so um, and we do have have we if we wanted to give one piece of technology to every student right now we could that would but that would exhaust all of our in in build technology and in classroom technology our laptop carts etc so we are um, so you know our, our feeling was that we had multiple um, Chromebooks per household once we came in September in March I will tell you we, we weren't we weren't ready a lot of people weren't ready in March when it happened and we did have uh, a kind of a problem providing Chromebook for the first part of this but we ended up being able to procure them and like I said we gave out more than 4,000 Chromebooks in, in August of last year Yes, um, we want to do both uh, again, and I think we're going to do more input sessions during the summer as well. Those were the school year kind of kickoff uh, that we're going to do and really about evaluating this. But I think looking at the uh, presenting this this plan again to our community in July and August is going to be an important piece of this. So we'll do that. Um, we'll do that remotely, and I think during the year we'll do remotely one, remote ones as well. Um, you know, we do remote people ask why it's not live, and we do live and people want to know why it's remote. So we're going to have to um, find a way to integrate the two. What part of the new plan are you most excited about? Um, you know, I'm excited about change. I'm excited about the opportunity to take, you know, the we always have said in public education to our to our legislators to give us give us the money money and we will we will make change um, up to this point. They haven't given us the money. Now we have the money. Now it's our opportunity and our and our responsibility to make change. So I think being able to take this money, apply it in the places where we need to apply it to achieve things like making sure our students are reading a grade level, to achieve things like graduating every student um, in the Kingston City School District, to achieve things like um, making sure that our food service is, is what our community expects from our food service and making sure students have a have a safe and and you know new place to play in the playgrounds, to making sure we can offer things that we wouldn't offer from the past like swimming lessons to all of our students and all of their families we do swimming in the ninth grade that's too late we need to be able to get to um, you know our students early and have and have things like swim lessons even this year in summer school um, we're, we're offering driver's education uh, you know the two biggest killers of, of youth in this country are car crashes and drowning um, so we looked at those things and said what can we do about that having this kind of money allows us to do things beyond the classroom and beyond the school year and, and maybe do things that are, that are uh, have real impact in students' lives beyond what we see as the achievement, you know, uh, the uh, academic achievement. And I think also looking at the social emotional pieces of this, we've been talking about social emotional learning for seven or eight years, um, and we've we've imp we've implemented programs, but not having the funding to implement them to the extent we want to. Adding the professionals that we need, like the social workers, um, now we can do that. So I'm just excited to see uh, have this opportunity to. I, I guess in this in this time is put our put our words to work and say we asked for the money and we'll do it. So they gave us the money. So it's our time and our opportunity to do it. What is differentiated instruction? Differentiated instruction is is being able to identify uh, the style of learning of every student in a classroom and change the instruction to meet the student where they are. Some students learn differently than others and it's been it's an opportunity to see how each or it's, it's a skill uh, that can be taught for identifying how students learn being able to change how you, how we teach um, how we how we give assignments uh, to to meet the students in their learning style not in ours so differentiated learning really is about just a totally child-centered learning experience where we we adapt to how they learn not they adapt to how we teach
what SEL curriculum will the middle and high school students be engaged in. Um, across the high school and middle school has been engaged in, in the PBIS model for the last several years. Uh, we're going to continue to look at that and evaluate that and see how that um, that program, uh, you know, is adapting to the rest of our SEL curriculum. As for social emotional learning, is there any way to restore the connection and guidance of the Children's Institution of Rock? Rochester Children's Institution in Rochester to secure grants as there are were fully implemented the primary project pros that intensely work on social emotional learning for K through three and four that help the target with the early intervention the youngest students who have social emotional needs. I'm not familiar with the with the with the Rochester program that you're talking about. I think the primary project program was um, was ended just before I got here, maybe nine or ten years ago and I think what we're looking at with our um, behavioral specialists and our behavioral technicians in our buildings is 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 looking at kind of rebuilding that type of model uh, using teachers teachers and teachers assistants who are spe specially trained to work with students yes this presentation will be posted by tomorrow yes we will have a Spanish like translation of this plan. Absolutely. The after school programming that the, that the district is planning. Uh, so we are planning to work both in house and with community partners. We we we, we, we will be working with um, uh, healthy kids. We'll be working with the YMCA. Uh, um, we'll also be having our own programs such as tops. Some of you are familiar with, but we're going to expand tops. Anyone knows tops usually starts late in the year and ends early early in the year. We're going to expand TOPS to, to a you know, full 10 month program as well. So and each of those are going to have different different things included, including you know homework help, including outdoors and including physical um, help, music, arts, um, those kind of pro programs that are, and they will be free to our district, um, to our district residents and to our students. So they'll be free aftercare programs um, with our community partners and with our in school, like at our middle school, our extended learning will continue to be our in school um, providers, but we right now we don't have after school programming in every elementary school. We will come September. OK. I think that was our last question. Um, just check one more thing. Oh, here was another one. Whenever I say that, another one comes in. Well, bus be available for those doing after school programs. Yes, transportation will be available for after school programs. Um, and uh, like I said, transportation will also be available for our for our summer programs too, which that isn't usually the case. But we will be running late buses for all of our students who are participating in after school um, programs throughout the district. Transportation is a big part of of this planning. Uh, we know that having the programs is one thing, but getting students to and from these programs is another. So um, you know, access to these programs, transportation is a big part. So we're going to be we're going to be providing that. It is yes, the fast forward pro fast forward is the same program that was implemented in the district in 2005. It's actually, actually it's new. It's new and updated, but it is the same. Yes, is it, you've you remember it from many years ago. But yes. Grades is great. Um, tops is for our elementary students. What is Healthy Kids? Healthy Kids is a community based organization and they they specialize in after school programs. Um, they've done several programs in our district in the past. They've worked at Graves and um, Edson, I believe in the past. So we've had uh, we have had them on board. Um, Participate uh, Graves and Chambers, I believe, um, but we've had them on board in a small in small ways in the past, and we're going to expand that, as well as the, our use of the YMCA's programs. Yes, so the YMCA will be doing more than just babysitting. Again, we, you know, we're working with them right now on what exactly their after-school curriculum would look like, so we can you know approve that um, to make sure that it is, it's doing more than babysitting. Think for sure, yes, that we want those, you know, it's part of our part of our um, way of dealing with learning loss, so we can't be babysitting 
It has to be, you know, academically based, social emotional learning, arts, music, those kind of things are what we're looking for. What is TOPS? TOPS is our after school program at our, it's mostly at our Title I schools. So it's, it's an after school program uh, that we've had in this district from long before I was here. Hello? What does healthy kids do? Please give an example. Is it running laps and doing jumping jacks, for example? No, it's not. Um, it's it's multiple different activities. Uh, it's from academic activities to physical activity to uh, to arts and crafts uh, to uh, you know nutrition. Uh, several different programs within the within. Um, healthy kids and we have we will have and I will post a, a curriculum for both the healthy kids and the YMCA once we have them fully established. TOPS is okay so what do they do at TOPS? TOPS again is an after school program. Uh, it includes homework help, it includes academic help, uh, includes outdoor activity, physical activity, arts and crafts, a lot of different and, um, social emotional learning programs within within tops so there's it's it runs a gamut of many different activities going on at once in our school building after school okay the best way to get another question just to say I think that's our last question, but um, it looks like that might be our last question for tonight. As I said, um, you know, keep an eye on our website and, and your um, your text and email blast. We will be doing another presentation this summer and then obviously we're going to be doing a lot of um, outreach and input during the school year as well. So again, I want to thank everyone who participated this evening. Uh, we will have the plans, the plan posted on our website by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, and thank. Oh, I have one more question. Yeah, whenever I say that, will there be more music and arts with this, this money? Yes, uh, we have several different opportunities for music and arts, and one of the ones that I've been highlighting is a new part partnership with the Bardavan. Um, so we're really excited about being able to partner with the Bardavan to bring um, uh, um, artists and residents into our school buildings, going to uh, UPAC for for performances. Um, we're having artists and residents working with our teachers, so we are um, excited about expanding that program uh, with the Bardavan and being able to, but there will be music and arts in this plan as well, yes. Yes, if you have more ideas, you can definitely email me. <laughs> okay. That'll give me the opportunity to have some water. We're holding a few seconds while well, another one of the people who's watching is typing. Could you talk about how our money will be break down between L's middle and high school and and the spending? Well, again, we we haven't broken down you know percentage by building our elementary. Obviously, we're going to be equitable across the board and and move money to where it and as I said beginning using using these funds and these programs in the areas where they're needed the most so an equitable distribution of the funding um, across all grade levels in all buildings is an important piece of this um, and we are also you know we are still there are still several items that we're unsure what the cost will be so again playgrounds for example um, you know HVAC for example we're still waiting to find out what what those numbers are going to look like so we're still kind of holding back on, on some 
of the money. But um, when we looked at, for example, when we looked at smaller class sizes at the elementary levels, um, you know, we focused in on spending a significant amount of money in that area to make sure that we kept our class sizes at the elementary, you know, low. Um, but then we, and when we looked at the, the high school and we looked at additional supports, especially for our English language learners, um, you know, we spent a, you know a, a good deal of opportunity and, and uh, of money and, and funding in those areas. So I think a lot of personnel is is one thing, but also some of the bricks and mortar things we're looking at are areas where we're um, still estimating that dollar figure. But as far as breakdown across the, the three, we're going to distribute it equitably and move it to the areas where the students who need it most um, are served. When will the FS10 be completed? We're actually still waiting for the state education department to give us a little more guidance around exactly how they want the FS10 to look. Um, but we, you know, as soon as we have that, this plan, this plan is in the hands of our business office right now. They're putting, you know, they're putting each one of the dollars to programs that we've provided for them to fill in the the FS10. So as soon as that's done, that'll be posted with the plan as well. What will there be? A, will there be a pre-K expansion? What would that look like? At this point, we're not having a pre-K expansion. Um, we still use our, re, our pre-K funds and our in-house pre-K here. So we do not have pre-K as part of this program for expansion. We're using other resources for pre-K. And there is an opportunity for pre-K expansion through the New York State, for New York State through, a, through a different grant that we'll be pursuing again this year. Could you talk about rezoning the schools? Would there be an expenditure from ARP or CRISA? Is that, that likely to happen? Um, as far as rezoning the schools, there's really not a, there's, there's not a huge expenditure to looking at redistricting, you know, our school buildings. Uh, but uh, that has been a conversation that we've been having over the last several years. On um, what does it look like? Um, we are also monitoring, you know, our our enrollment um, where. Our, it may be we may be required, not required. It may, it may be necessary for us to look at um, redistricting our schools based on capacity of schools. It may be required that we they we look at some other options as far as space is concerned for our district, whether it be construction or um, obtaining another property. Uh, we could use ARP funds for construction or obtaining another property. Um, but as far as using it as as redistricting outside of hiring a consultant, which would be eligible under. Um, under ARP, there really wouldn't be a huge amount of expense to that. Um, we'd have to look at it. Would there be a change in cost of transportation? But usually when we did that, when we redistricted, redistricted several years ago, um, there really wasn't a huge increase in costs in anything that we did or to make that happen. Will ARP question money be used for faculty and staff raises or for larger classroom budgets? Um, you know, we there is a portion of ARP that can be used that we'll be using for materials and supplies. We've already, um, you know, budgeted that during our regular budget, but we can use it for materials and supplies. But no, ARP or CRISA funds will not be used for faculty staff raises. That comes out of our general fund budget and that will remain that way. Okay, I think that's our last question for this evening. Uh, again, I want to thank everyone for participating. Keep your eyes out on the website and uh, on your emails and your text blasts for our, our next session, and we will have this plan posted by the end of the day tomorrow. So again, thank you. Have a great evening, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.